When did I start getting into motorbikes? They were always in my life, because um, Dad was into his motorbikes, so this garage is always full of something that he was tinkering on. But I didn't myself get into them until about sort of 10 years ago, when I had to give up surfing, I needed to sort of transfer my free time onto something else, so that filled the gap quite nicely for me. Bell staff mean to me, for me it's, uh, it, again, it means Dad. You know, Dad used to wear his Bell staff everywhere that was uh, growing up as a kid that was his go-to jacket so yeah for me it's it's about childhood it's about growing up it's about family this is dad's original jacket this is the one that he lived in pretty much 24 7 as i was growing up dad was quite short compared to me so um, there's just no chance i can wear this jacket which is so frustrating because it's quite simply beautiful and it's so warm very old and tatty but it's 1940s bell stuff and so that's the the label that i couldn't quite make out and then inside. So that's what sent me down the path of investigating Bellstaff jackets. And uh, yeah, I fell in love. Absolutely fantastic brand. It's got the old badges on it. That's um, Dad's old motorbike club, the Ulfacoom and District, and the 59 Club, again, obviously. And he was a big fan of BSAs. He had a, he had a gold star, so it's almost the right height. I think it's probably, if Dad was here, it'd be about there. <laughs> Earliest memory of the cat. Uh, probably from when I was about five years old, Dad sat me on the petrol tank of the bike, um, no crash helmet, no safety gear, and he rode me all the way out past Saunton, up over the top, round the headland, you could see Lundy Island with the sun going down behind it. And we dropped down into Croyd, um, we stopped off uh, ice cream with clotted cream on it, we had that, and then he rode me back home up over that top road and just sat there on the petrol tank with the sound of the two-stroke engine thumping away and the smell of the oil and the petrol. I mean, that was it for me. That was me just hooked on bikes, I think. The story of the cat and how it ended up under the floorboards. Dad had a lot of motorbikes. This garage was, was full, you know, the grease and BSAs and various other bits and pieces and the cat. Um, but sadly, so when I was about 20, uh, mum and dad split up and uh, dad had to move out and sort of sized down all of his stuff so his motorbikes he sold them all off uh, and they kind of all disappeared pretty much overnight including the cat so we all assumed that he'd sold the cat because you know they all disappeared at the same time but uh, although they split up mum and dad decided to, to keep the family home just in case either myself or my sister wanted to buy the house at a later date so fast forward about 20 years and my wife and I um, we're in a position to buy a house and we like this house. So we thought, okay, well, you know, we'll go for it. So we made them an offer. They were happy. We moved in and it's probably four years later, um, my brother-in-law came down and he came down on this amazing sort of cafe racer that he built out of this crazy Russian bike that he pulled out of a hedge somewhere. And it was gorgeous and I was quite jealous. I was like, oh, that's, that's a nice project. Um, and my dad happened to pop in for a cup of tea and I said to him, I said, oh, I'm really quite jealous of Max, he's just built this amazing cafe racer, I, I've always wanted to build a bike. And without any kind of hint of irony, he looked at me, his eyes lit up and he went, oh, you can rebuild the cat. I'm like, what do you mean rebuild the cat? It's like, it's, it's been sold, it's gone. He goes, no, no, it's not sold, it's at home underneath your floorboards. <laughs> and yeah, um, he hadn't sold it, he'd sold the other bikes and the cat, he'd just taken it apart into all its component pieces and just stuffed them in the crawl space underneath the dining room. And that's where they stayed for 20 odd years without telling anyone. This is where dad hid the bike for all those years without telling anyone. That's where the dog gets scared. There we go. The bike came out in about a day, you know, it was, it was all in bits. So we just sort of grabbed it and stuck it in the kitchen here. So it was just a, a pile of motorbike bits. Um, but then dad, after having said that, you know, I could rebuild the cat, he ran off with it to begin with because it sort of uh, reinvigorated his interest in building bikes. Um, and it's, 
A bit of a sad story, but um, Dad was uh, suffering from cancer at the time and it was kind of like his final project, so we sort of worked on it together and my brother-in-law stepped in and he did his bit as well to help us. And it became like, a, a, again, a big family project, which is quite nice in a way because he built it originally with his dad and then I rebuilt it with, with him you know, years later. He became too ill basically and had to go into hospital, so that was when Max and I stepped in and we tried to sort of finish the bike off and it became a bit of a race against time. And sadly, he never got to see the bike completed. Um, but I do know he'd have been immensely proud to have seen the bike going up the beach today. That would have been an absolute dream come true for him. Fast forward a few years, um, Dad's passed away, and uh, I'm heading off to New York just on a on a holiday. And I've been looking for a replacement jacket, like a copy of that of that bell stuff. I really wanted that. I just couldn't find it anywhere. So I was on holiday in New York, and on Google, oh, there's a, a Bellstar store, It'd be worth checking out. And my wife and I, we walk in, and it's a really nicely laid out store. There was like sort of the gents on one side, ladies on the other, a bit of a whiskey tasting session as, as you came in. So I went straight to the whiskey, had a chat to the guy that was working there. And I looked across to my right, and to get into the gents section, you had to sort of go through an archway. And right there, hanging in the archway with a spotlight on it, was this green jacket that is near as damn it a copy of that original 1940s one. Like, Can I try on that jacket? And uh, the assistant was like, yeah, yeah, it's the last one in the store. And it was my size. And I'm like, well, this is it. This is the jacket that I'm taking home. This is clearly going to be, you know, my replacement jacket. And uh, I then I had to sort of, you know, I wanted to start sourcing, getting the, the, the right badges and stuff for it. So, 59 badge and the BSA badge, they were quite easy to find reproductions of. Um, and I was going through uh, all of Dad's stuff that I inherited when he passed away. And I found an old Villiers uh, instruction manual for the engines. And as a bookmark, he was using a brand new one of those motorcycle club patches. It hadn't even been cut out yet, it was just in there as, as a bookmark. So my jacket even has the correct badges to copy Dad's old one. Riding on the beach, yeah, that's a very emotional experience, I have to say. Taking the cat down and riding down there, knowing that's where Dad had been when he was younger, and just seeing that open expanse of sand that goes on for miles, and you've just got the, the freedom that you, you can't experience anywhere else.